This is a timeline of every step needed to raise venture capital from pitching an investor to actually getting cash in your bank account. And it absolutely sucks. And nobody talks about it. And that's a huge problem. There are so many videos about pitch decks, but so few videos about what happens next. And so many founders that I get to talk to have no idea of how much work they're going to have to put up after they go through the pitch deck phase and that it's going to take months. I run a venture back company. We've actually been through this twice. So in this video, I want to break down every step of the process and point you to some free tools that you can use to figure each one of those steps. Let's do it. So I'm going to break this down into this timeline of faces. I've seen these faces up close. We did it for our own business, of course, and some of the companies that we've worked with. Pitching is the process from finding investors to getting your first yes, which may or may not come with a term sheet, which you negotiate on. We'll get to that in a sec. Diligence is about a month long process of going through your legal documents, your contracts, incorporation, and legal documents, equity, financials, cap table. The idea is to make sure everything is in order and everything that you pitched is true. Then there's the legal process. That's negotiating the fine print on the deal. That's converting this one to two page term sheet into a 10, 20 page stock purchase agreement. And it'll be the most expensive part of the whole thing. And last but not least, getting the money, which doesn't come in checks anymore. It's 2024. So let's start with pitching. For every $500,000 you want to raise, you'll want to pitch about 100 investors. The pitching phase is brutal because you're going to get a lot of no's, and that's probably one of the most discouraging parts of a founder's job. But sadly, that's just part of the deal. You're going to start this process by finding investors that could fund your company. But in order to do that, you first need to understand what kind of company you are. Most of our customers, a good chunk of our audience, are looking for tech investors, venture capital, but not all companies are venture backable. Tech investors like solutions to very large problems. That's $100 million companies, companies that can scale really quickly using technology or software or AI. Tech investors don't usually want profits. They're looking for companies that want to spend very aggressively to grow, and their return on investment for them is when the company exits or IPOs in seven to 10 years. That's not to say the company isn't profitable, it's just that they're not after those profits. We only got to raise investor capital because our core product was a SaaS business. If we were to try to raise venture capital for this YouTube channel or our main YouTube channel, it wouldn't have worked. That's not the type of investor that invests in that. But it's also important to understand what your stage is. Pre-seed companies, for example, usually have a good form team, a good idea, and a good vision of what the product's gonna be. Most importantly, a pre-seed company can execute and deliver that product on their own. If you don't have that, then you're probably an idea stage company and funding alternatives are gonna be much more limited for you. Now, Pre-Seed can access funding from friends and family investors, that's people who know them, people who believe in the founders more than they believe in the idea at that point. You can do startup accelerators, you can occasionally do some super early stage angels and funds like Hustle Fund. So understanding these rounds is not only important because of the type of investor that you wanna be targeting, but to ensure that the money that you raise is enough to get you to the next one. You do not want to be stuck in the middle of two stages, because raising money there is really hard. We made this startup stage cheat sheet, which uh, you can just browse on our website and consult what you need. With a clear idea of your stage, now it's time to go and try and find investors. And you wanna start with your immediate city. When we raised money back in, in 2017, I think being in the same city as your investors was by all means a requirement, but I think post pandemic, it's become more of a nice to have. I'm gonna link our investor finder, which can help make this search less painful because again, you're gonna need to go through hundreds, maybe thousands of prospects, investors, so that you can find the hundreds that you have to pitch and go down that funnel. Now, the most important part is that you want to start with people that you know directly and move to people that you can get a warm intro to. Do not cold email investors ever. It's, it's a rookie move, it doesn't work, and even worse, do not email blast your deck. Don't send it before asking. The way an ideal investor introduction goes is first you ask a mutual contact for a warm intro. If you want, you can send them like a one paragraph blurb of what you do so that you can so that they can forward it to the investor and you make their lives easier. Here's an example of one that you can use. You can screenshot it, you can use it. Then once you're in touch, you can ask if you can send your pitch deck. The pitch deck that you'll be sending here is, is what we call an email deck. It needs to be self-explanatory. Someone needs to be able to read it, understand it without your help, without your narration in three to four or five minutes tops. 
you want to include some good teasing information about the business, tell them what you do, tell them your vision for it. Nobody will sign an NDA to receive it, so don't even bother asking. That's also a rookie move. Then you send it. Ideally, you send it through a platform that lets you track once the investor sees it. Link to that below. In my experience, investors will glance at it and not reply right away. If they're interested, they're gonna see it again over the next few days. And then if you've seen them look at the deck and or maybe not look at the deck and you haven't heard back, yeah, you can send an email reminder. After that, if they're interested, you'll get a meeting. Meetings are usually 45 minutes. You'll small talk for about five, then you go through an extended version of this email deck that you sent, going over more detail, and that should last about 15 minutes. And then after that, there's usually a round of questions and you'll be in your way. Try to walk out of this meeting with a call to action. Understand which side of the court the ball is in. If they're not interested, you're gonna get a nice no. <laughs> nice no's are usually disguised in something like, hey, we'd, we'd like to see more traction first, or we'd like to see accomplish blank. For the most part, that's usually a no, and it's not easy to turn those no's into yeses, but you can try asking what the milestone is. You can make a note to yourself so that you can email them once you hit that milestone. You can ask if you can send them investor updates. That's useful. One of our biggest investors, which we had actually scratched off as a no, came in after one of those investor updates. So it isn't entirely crazy. I've seen it happen. Normally, an investor will take maybe one or two meetings and a few emails to make a decision. Maybe you'll need to jump in calls or meet other partners in the firm. And you're going to need to repeat this process dozens of times with different investors. So prepare yourself for it. Brace yourself for it. In my case, this was absolutely the most painful part of the entire ordeal because it's just tough to get rejected all the time. You want to keep a log of your conversations with them. Our investor finder has a little CRM tool that you can use to take notes and keep logs of what you've talked with each investor because I'm terrible with names and I forget. And if they're interested, they'll let you know and you move on to the next step. The hardest investor to find is the first one. Trust me, because it's their job to negotiate these terms. How much is your company worth? How much equity are they getting? Are those shares preferred? What exceptions do they have? This negotiation is usually done through a term sheet, which is this one to two page summary of the terms of the round, the investment. Now, if you have many investors lined up waiting to lead a round, you're gonna be in a great position because you're gonna have them outbidding themselves. And if you don't, then you really don't have a lot of bargaining power. Investors know that time is not on your side, so they have that going for them, and that's gonna be a factor in the negotiation. But once you negotiate a term sheet with the lead investor and they commit to it, things move along a lot easier. You can go to other investors, you can tell them that you have a lead, and they will, for the most part, follow and adapt to those same terms. Now, leading around has another extra complication, which is that they're in charge of the diligence. The term sheet is not binding. It's not a guaranteed contract. You are not guaranteed to get any money. It all depends on the diligence. Diligence is the process where an investor makes sure that everything about your business is in order. And again, it's usually done by the lead investor. So during your diligence process, your job is to put together a data room. And most people will use a Google Drive folder for that. Now, collecting all of these documents is mostly on you. If you've been structured about it, you might already have a Google folder with a good bunch of them. If you're not, you're gonna have to do a lot of emailing to get and collect them all. The lead investors were gonna go through all of this and it's gonna take them a few weeks. You have stuff going from pitch deck to financials, like your PL, your balance sheet, and your financial projections. Then on the legal side, you have incorporation documents, your stock purchase agreements, your cap table, company bylaws, board of directors, and the agreements that they've reached before this one. If you have previous rounds in funding, they'll of course want to check the documentation and the terms of those rounds as well. Then we go into IP. Uh, they would want to make sure that you have registered trademarks. If you have patents or patents are a relevant part of your business valuation, they'll want to check on those too. Then staff, they'll check the organizational charts, the contracts that you have with key people, making sure that the founders have non-compete agreements and you know the right IP protection for all the code that's been developed. So here's a list, or rather more like a checklist of everything that you need to include. I put that up together a few months ago. Uh, free download, I'll, I'll link it in the description. In my case, this was mostly an async process. They work on their own, they let you know if you have any questions, and again, it's gonna take them about a month. Now at the time when we raised money, our business wasn't really too complex, so everything was in order. There wasn't a lot of document crawling to go through, but that obviously changes from company to company and it gets much more complicated in, in future rounds of funding. If you pass the diligence process, the next step is drafting all the legal documents. That's mostly converting the one two-page term sheet into a five, 10, sometimes 20-page document where the company creates all the new shares that they're gonna sell 
to the investor. We made a whole video about how the process of issuing new share works in a company, so check that out if you have more questions. Now, what most people underestimate about this part is how expensive it's going to be. And it's mostly the company that has to pay for the legal fees. Our own equity round racked up around $50,000 worth of legal fees, which, which we were able to negotiate down to like 30K. What we did back then was sort of agree on a max amount that lawyers would charge us for the for the transaction and force them to not overcharge us beyond that. Convertible loans are normally much cheaper, around the 10K range in my experience, and that's why many companies tend to raise money with convertible notes when the, when the rounds are smaller or when they're early stage. Safes might even be cheaper because the safe is working out of an existing template, an existing document. As expensive as this process is, do not cut corners. These documents define how your company is going to be split in the future. And if you get something wrong now, it could be really expensive or painful later. Reviewing this fine print and collecting all the signatures, it's probably going to take about a month, maybe a little less if it's a safe or, or a convertible note, since it's a pretty standard document template and a much shorter document. And now the round is not done, <laughs> not yet. Now you need to do capital calls. Your investors are signed, but they only transfer their money once that's done. Capital calls means sharing wire instructions, and we're gonna attach a template below too that you can use. And then a few days later, finally, seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars land on your company's bank account, which, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You should budget a couple of weeks for this process from the moment that round documents are signed until all the money finally comes into the account. Now, your first question here might be, can it happen faster? And the answer is yes, it, it can happen faster, but that's the exception by no means the norm. If, if you were able to raise money faster than this, I actually, I think everybody would find useful if you drop your story in the comments. In a nutshell, we're talking about a four to six months, four to six months of your life spent doing this. Pitching, negotiation, and diligence are for the most part a full-time job for the founder, usually the CEO. So brace for it. More importantly, remember that your business will need to run without you while you do all this stuff and growth needs to keep going. So choose the right time when you wanna actually begin fundraising. Now, once you have the data room ready, things get a little easier for you because it's mostly a lot of waiting and a lot of document reviews. Remember that you wanna raise enough money to get to the next stage. So if you're going from pre-seed to seed or from seed to series A, remember to raise enough money to get to that stage and a few extra months of cushion. You don't wanna go through this process again too soon. And then remember, if you're in a hurry to get to the end, you lose a lot of leverage in that negotiation process. I really hope all this sheds some light on this process. Only about 1% of startups manage to raise capital, so I understand why it's not so well documented. Make sure you stay on top of the latest news about startup funding with our Startup Club newsletter, which we send twice a week. Resources in the description, and check out our video on how issuing stock works for founders and for employees. Catch you on the next one.